Out at the field this morning to maiden the E-Flight, the new E-Flight PT-17. I just got this guy yesterday and assembled him. I do want to make a couple of remarks about the assembly first before I sort of fire him up and maiden him. I have to say I found this one of the most awkward and difficult assemblies that I've ever dealt with, with a, you know, a, whatever you want to call it, a sort of ready, essentially ready to fly plane. I mean, I bought the bind and fly version, but, you know, uh, kits are obviously different where you're assembling stuff from a kit, there's a lot more to do. But, you know, for a plane where you're just supposed to be putting it together straightforwardly, I, I, this presented more problems than most. Uh, the single biggest problem was the landing gear which, blunt, to be put it bluntly, just did not fit at all. They tell you to screw it on, they give you this piece here, and they, it comes and they say, you know, insert it and screw it on with the four screws. It absolutely did not fit at all. Um, the, the width of this piece here was about, was actually, when I got it, was only about that. It was about an inch less than the width of where it has to go across the fuselage, and it was much more curved in. I think basically it was taken out of the mold to the plastic was taken out of the mold too quickly or something and it was curved in. Anyway, it needed a lot of straightening out. There was just no way it was going to fit. <laughs> I basically what I did was I undid these little screws here on the inside and took off the upper part of the outer pants to make it easier to distort the thing without breaking stuff. And then I had to sort of bend it and, 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 and bend this part. You can see it's not come very well now. It's, it's, if anything, cracked a little bit. And it's still not fitting very well. You can see it's still bulging up. Very, very difficult to make it fit at all, it was. And it's only held on by four small screws. Those are just like 10 millimeter, very thin, self-tapping screws, metal screws going into plastic. So you can't use any force on those to try and force it in, or she'll just strip the plastic. So that was very difficult, very difficult to get the, the landing gear to fit. And as you see, it's, it's, I mean, it's perfectly safe. It'll hold the plane, but it's not fitted well now because the part just didn't fit. Uh, I had a few other problems. There's some, you know, inaccuracies in the, in, the, in the assembly instructions. They say to attach the ball joint at the tail. It's not a ball joint. It's just a clevis. That's not really an important problem. It's an inaccuracy. And when you put the bottom wing on, they say to swing these little latches into place. Well, there were no little latches when I went to put it on. There were just little holes here, but there were no latches. I thought they'd just forgotten to include the latches at first. Then I found that these, um, these little pieces of wire were actually in another little bag with the small parts. So you have to put them on, fine. But, uh, you know, the instructions don't tell you to put them on. The instructions seem to assume they're going to come on, but they don't. And then you've got to put the, these pins through these little holes. That was also rather tricky. You can turn the pins. I was trying to put them in without turning the pins at first, and I just couldn't get them in. But 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 but, for, but, but you can, in fact, turn these plastic pins. The plastic pins can be rotated to get the hole lined up in the angle you want. Uh, another problem I had with it was these... Uh, these struts, you have to put the flanges in the bottom of these struts into, into grooves and turn them, turn the, turn the strut, you put it in an angle and turn it to get it in. Again, they absolutely wouldn't go in at first because um, it was a combination of the fact that the, uh, the struts were, the, the flanges on the struts were rather poorly cast in the plastic. They had a lot of rough edges on them and rough parts sticking out from the plastic. And then they painted over this after it was installed, so the paint was kind of clogging up the the slots so I had to use a knife to clean the slots out of the um, out of the, uh, the the grooves and then um, use a sanding block to sand down the um, the flanges before they would go in. Oddly enough the the top wing I thought after all these difficulties I was going to have a problem getting the top wing to go on the top wing went on the struts very well although I did have some trouble getting these pins in. They, they, it takes quite a bit of force to push them through, but of course you've got to be careful, you've got to be sure that the hole in the strut's lined up, else if you apply force you're just going to bend the thing. But even once this whole hole is lined up, quite a bit of force is, is, was my, in my case anyhow, was required to put them in. I found it a little hard to get the, uh, the uh, tail in as well, but you know, it's no, no massively more than difficulty. Oh, another, another issue I had was See, what they did, apparently, the whole thing's painted with yellow paint, and I just, it looks nice, but I just hope it's going to hold up. But obviously what they did here was they painted the fuselage, and then they stuck things like this little vent and the, um, and the um, windows on after they'd painted it. 
and this vent and the front window fell off on mine while I was assembling it. Not because the glue gave way, the glue was fine. What happened was the paint came off, basically. They just glued it to the paint, basically, because they painted the thing yellow and then glued those pieces on afterwards. So they were glued to the paint. And the glue held to the paint, but the paint didn't hold to the foam, so they just they, they came off, and I, I glued them back on. Um, that makes me a bit nervous about how well this paint's going to hold up. Sometimes paint holds up very well. I mean, for example, my UMX uh, carbon cub, I've, that's painted yellow all over, and I've flown that thing... Oh, I've flown it probably more than any other plane I've got, because I love it. And, and the yellow paint hasn't come off that. It's stood up very, very well. Anyway... So there you are. So I, it was a little bit of a struggle in terms of some parts not fitting very well and whatever to get it assembled. Um, especially that thing with the landing arrow. This is paper from where they labeled. That's another thing. They, I don't know, they labeled these things. It's good that they labeled them right and left, but it would have been nice if they labeled them with something other than rather this sticky sort of price tag stuff that doesn't want to come off. But anyway, I'm trying to get the last of it off. Anyway, so there we go. Um, and this is the battery hatch. I've already got a battery in there. Uh, they have this little sliding battery tray, which seems quite a nice idea. Um, I just hope it works well. Um, I've got a 2200 in there. i turn my transmitter on. And I've put it about as far forward as you reasonably can, because you need to to get the center of gravity right. The center of gravity is maybe towards the back end of where they say anyway. They do say you can use anything up to a 3000, so you could use a bigger battery. And you've got room, you could probably even put a 3300 in there. Oh, I'm going to need the adapter. <sighs> because this battery has a Dean's connector on it. And we'll try connecting him up then. This has the, what is it, uh, AR636A receiver with the safe select in it, uh, similar to the Valiant and things and the Timber. Doesn't seem to be a lot of throw on the elevators, but I hope they'll be okay. That's the throw they came with. Uh, well, I mean, that's a, that's the, that's a hundred percent of the row they of the throw they came with. Looks rather low throw, but we'll see. Um, I've got a little camera here in the pilot position. I've got the, um, what do you call them, the, the SX-11. I'm not sure what it's going to see too much, but we'll see. Okay, that's initialized. I believe that's recording now, so we'll put that in. And we'll hook up and we'll, we'll go and give him a maiden flight. Throttle cut is on. Um, the undercarriage looks very nice. And it's, it's sprung and everything. It's got these sprung wheels. I worry a little bit, though. Fancy undercarriages worry me to some extent because they're all very nice, but operating on a roughish grass field a lot. Yeah, you know, they have a nasty tendency to break and then they're, when they're more complicated, they're much harder to fix. The ideal undercarriage for a grass field for me is the one that comes on the old Park Zone Sport Cub S2, which they're about to re-release as the Carbon Cub S Plus. That undercarriage is just straight wire, bent wire frame with big, uh, you know, big uh, um, Tundra type wheels on it. It's got little layer pants, but they're not anything significant. They're just pieces of plastic that clip onto the wire. They don't cause any trouble. Um, it works excellently for landing and takeoff on the grass. You can take off and land umpteen times. It doesn't get damaged. And if it ever did get damaged, it's pretty easy to fix. You know, because it's just wheels, you know, held onto a wire struck by a collar. Nothing fancy. And they work excellently. This looks very nice all, you know, this sprung undercarriage. But I, you know, as I say, it just worries me that, you know, if it does break on the uh, rough field... It's got not going to be something easy to fix, like a straightforward wheel held onto a wire, you know, by a by a throttle cut off by a uh, collar. 
a little cold this morning. The hot, uh, the late season hot spell has broken. It's going to be even colder tomorrow, but it's on the cool side now. Uh, okay, well, I've got it in safe mode for the initial takeoff. We'll see. Not that that's necessary. No flaps. Whoa. Pulled him up a little too sharply there. I probably have a tendency to do that. I should let planes take themselves off more. Get the hang of how much power he has and what he wants to do. Actually, he seems to kind of like to fly in a rather nose-up. I mean, he may be a bit tail-heavy still. He seems to want to fly in a rather nose-up attitude at the best of times. I don't know. Why is it flying in such a nose-up attitude? I didn't really... Good Lord, it's hard to get it to come down. I'm trying to get it to come down, and it doesn't want to. Whoa. Well, that's ridiculous. Time remaining, six minutes. It's kind of hard to get it to come down. It, see, it seems to just want to keep going up, which I don't like. Okay, let's take it out. Of, AS3X mode. Take it out of safe mode and see whether it's any easier to fly out of safe mode. Well, it's a little easier to bring down, but that's sort of weird. I mean, I've got the uh, I've, the center of gravity is only a hair back of where they said to put it, but it seems quite tail heavy. It just seems to want to go up all the time. I think I want the center. I think I want the center of gravity further forward. Good lord, yes, I'm having to push it down all the time. No, this is not good. I don't like this. Safe mode. No, I don't like that at all. I do not like that. I'm having to. It's it's hard to push it down. It wants to go up all the time on you. you you're having to absolutely just push it to get it to come down at all. It wants to fly in a nose-up attitude, and it just wants to go up all the time. Which is uh, not how I like to fly. And that was like a busy, pretty much a dead stick landing. <laughs> if you give it any power, it just wants to... I am not happy with that center of gravity. Um, no, I'm not happy with it. I mean, it's flyable and all that, but I'm not happy with that center of gravity. Definitely not. And it's, um, you know... I don't know whether I can, you can see, I've made black, those black marks I've made on the wing there, those are the marks where they say, they say 86 centimeters. Oh, well, I guess I am a bit back of that. Well, I'm not that much back of it, though. And they say 76, um, 86 millimeters plus or minus 3 millimeters. 3 millimeters is not much, so they don't really give you much allowance. Um... I am definitely not happy with that center of gravity, though. I mean, it's, uh, I didn't even try really much in the way of flying it because it was just obviously far too much wanting to go up all the time. Uh, I don't know, E-flights seem to have a bit of a tendency these days to build planes that are naturally tail heavy. I don't know what's with that, but, uh, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'll try and stop this guy a minute. We'll stop that guy. And then I'm going to stop this as well. I'm going to try it with a different, with a, a 3000, I guess. Try and get the center of gravity further forward. Okay, now I've got a 3000 in. About as far, well, actually absolutely as far forward as it can go. And I, now I couldn't get the 3,000, I couldn't get the 3,000 flat on the tray because you'd have to, I don't know, it just, it just won't quite fit between the foam, so I had to put it in at an angle like that. And it's touching the foam at the front, so it's absolutely as far forward as it can go. That's with the 3,000 absolutely as far forward as it can go. And it... 
Well, it just about balanced. Even now, it's a hair behind those marks, probably. And that's with the 3000 as far forward as it can possibly go. It's still a hair tail heavy. Uh, I had the same problem with the Commander. I could never get it to balance far enough forward, although the Commander was not as problematical to fly. This was quite problematical to fly. It just did not want to come down at all. Going to try and put this camera on again. Okay, it should be ready. There we go. It should be recording. We'll try again, but I have to say I was not happy with that. It was tail heavy. I suppose, well, that camera doesn't weigh much. That camera might be contributing a tiny bit. It is behind the center of gravity, I guess. Uh, it's not a terribly heavy camera. It weighs less than an ounce. Uh, about, I think about two thirds of an ounce I weighed that one. And it's not very far behind the center of gravity, so I wouldn't think it was throwing it off a lot, but it, it's a little. It's maybe having some effect. Okay, well, we'll see. I mean, it flew before, it flew before, but as I say, it was, it just wanted to go up all the time. Trying to get it to come down in any way, shape or form was hard work. Uh, just didn't want to. I was seriously worried I would, you know, about how I was going to get it down at all at first. I did manage to get it to come down. But... Oh, whoops. I was going to say that seemed a more reasonable takeoff, but then it, for some reason, it seemed to, at first as if it was thinking of taking off reasonably, but then it uh, kind of went nose up again. Well, I can put some down trim in, but good lord, it's still now, I'm still, that's full down elevator. Full, uh, well, not high rate. high rate. Oh, for goodness sake. See how it bloomed there when I took, it just wants to go up all the perishing time. The blithering thing just wants to go up all the flipping time. Again, I'm, that's full, that's, that's fairly low power and full high down rate. elevator at high rates. And that, as, soon as, see, as soon as I take my blithering, uh, as soon as I take my, uh, uh, my figure up, my, my thumb off the stick, the thing just balloons like crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Again, this is, that's full down elevator. Well, I think we are still in... It, it, AS3X. Yeah, that was full down elevator in, in safe mode, but still. And yeah, I mean, it's a little easier to push it down when it's in AS3X mode, a little easier, but it still don't really want to come down. Time remaining, five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna... Mode. I'm gonna try a couple more adjustments. I'm going to try seeing, adjusting the elevator just down more, and I'm going to try initializing, see if I can initialize the safe mode with it pointing down more, because maybe what it thinks is it's self-leveling is just too high, two nose up. It's trying to self-level itself two nose up. <sighs> okay, um... Throttle cut on. <sighs> Um, oh, well, I don't know. I'm going to turn my onboard camera off first. Uh, oh, it'll probably taxi. Throttle cut off. Don't see any reason to believe it won't taxi for what it's worth. Yeah, it will taxi. Throttle cut on. It will taxi. <clears throat> That's definitely clearly not a satisfactory way of flying, though, still. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, far too prone to go up all the time. And, I, and other, other than putting lead on, there's not much else I can do about the center of gravity. Uh, 
I've got that battery that's a 3000 as, as far forwards as it can go. Okay, so we'll turn this guy off. Famous last words, yes. Okay, I'm just going to turn this off while I make some adjustments. I'm going to uh, unplug the battery. I'm going to move the elevators further down with the clevis. And then I'm going to try and plug the battery in, maybe with a tail raised in the hope that that perhaps will cause it to think, you know, that its level position is more level. Okay, so than now I've just done whatever I can to force the thing down. Basically, I've screwed the elevator clevis in absolutely as far as I think it can go to try and push the elevators down. And then I ini when I initialized the thing, when I plugged it in, I initialized it with the tail raised up on a pile of stuff so that it would think it's, hopefully think its level position was more level. And I've put some elevator down sub trim in. So I've basically done a bunch of stuff to try and push it down, down trip, down sub trim, uh, more initialization at a level angle and screwing the clevis in. Let me get this camera to work again now. We'll see. Yep. I don't know. And normally I wouldn't want to do so much to a plane, but I mean, it just seemed constantly to want to go up all the time. It seemed like extremely difficult to push it down. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm doing what I can. Uh, and the center of gravity is about at their, about where they say maybe a hair behind the 86 millimeter, but probably within the three millimeters now with the, with the, with the 3000 all the way at the front, but it still seems to just want to go up all the time. AS3X mode, safe mode. And I think we'll take it off in safe, I think we'll take it off in safe mode. And sun's really coming up now. We've got to watch we don't blind ourselves. Okay, uh, let's go back to mid rate. Well, that's probably more natural now. It seems that you have to actually pull it up a bit. It doesn't want to shoot up all the time. Yeah, hmm. Might have overdone it a bit, actually. It's a little hard to pull up now. In, sa in safe mode. AS3X mode. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, that seems to have achieved... The basic objective in that in the, I'm actually having to pull it up a bit now, and it's fairly low throttle, but God, that sun's bright. It's not good. Uh, yeah, Six yeah, I'm actually having to pull it up now. So maybe we overdid it a little bit. Safe mode. Tricky to get this right. I maybe overdid it a bit. We'll take the sub trim out. I was having to push him down all the time before. Now I'm having to pull him up. Oh, it's not landing the long grass. Ah, go on. tip him over but I'm just trying to I'm trying to trying to oops I to want to run off to the right whoops it's a little hard to taxi him in a straight line he isn't god he really does seem to want to run off he wants to run off to the right and then I keep giving him uh, oh well okay okay so let's have a look here uh, take this off it's in the way Mm. 
Do I want to take all of the elevator sub trim off? It seems tricky to trod the... No, I think, well... That's where I, well, I had it before. I had 40 on before and I put it up to 60. Oh, maybe we'll take it all out and see. Okay, so I've taken all of the elevator sub trim out now. Time remaining, five minutes. I've taken all of the elevator sub trim out now. Yeah, and that's probably not too bad. Yes, that's just about flying fairly level. That's the first time I've got him to the point where he's flying fairly level, where I'm not either... Ha Initially, I was having to push him down all the time, and then that last time I kind of overdid it and I was having to pull him up. Yeah, he's still maybe going... Uh, if anything, he's, yes, he's tending to drift up a bit. I'm still having to pull him down a little now, maybe. But it's not bad. Okay, let's try and bring him closer. I don't, he's not a very big plane. He's only 1.1 millimeter. Uh, not millimeter, obviously. Meter, 1.1 meter. So, you know, he's not an enormous plane, so I don't want him... Time remaining. Four. Yeah, I'm still I'm having to push him down now. Yeah, the hell with it. I'm putting a little bit of down trim in. Again, putting a little bit of down trim in because I really am having to push him, push him down. AS3X mode. I'm having to push him down a little bit. Not mine. Well, that's pretty level. Quite responsive to the ailerons, I see. I haven't really tried much because I've been so concentrating so much trying to get him trimmed properly forward and backwards in, you know, in pitch that I haven't really been trying to do much else so far. Oh, no, I have no idea where we stand time-wise, really. This is a 3,000. Well, he's got enough... He's got enough up elevator there to do an inside loop. It's a real plane there. Yeah, and he's got pretty good air. I didn't get him very well. Well, I was a bit nervous about pushing him. I should have... I'd have done better, that would have worked better if I'd kept the throttle on more. But I'm still a bit nervous about it. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, get, it's getting there now. Time remaining, two minutes. Yeah, we probably should, I probably should bring him in because I don't know how... Uh, you know, the, I, I didn't change the battery after I, when I brought him down and adjusted him before. I've changed the battery once. I was on a 2200 initially. I put the 3000 in. So that was a new timer. But uh, my hands are getting cold. It's quite cold this morning. I'm going to be even colder. It's going to be like st back down to like, I don't know, 7 degrees or something tomorrow morning. Okay. Mode. Put him back in stabilized mode. Was thinking of putting the flaps on, but he doesn't have flaps. Of course, I fly quite a lot of planes that have flaps, so... I tend to think of putting the flaps on, but there aren't any in this case. little awkward there with the sun where it is. I don't want to fly right into the sun, but it is kind of where I would want to make my approach. Ooh, it is. Yes, that sun's really... It's really close. There's a bit of a rainbow there in the sky. I see, God, that sun really is kind of close to where I'm trying to make my approach, so it's hard to see what I'm doing because of the sun. Well, 
I put flaps up, but we got no flaps. I'm really used to, quite used to operating with flaps these days. See if we can taxi him in. Trying to turn him round before we hit the uh, long grass there. There we go. Throttle cut on. He operates on, what is it about his 11 inch propeller? No, oh, it doesn't say, it's not written on it. Oh, and I should never put that on the strap, so I can't let go of it. it do, I think it's about an 11 inch propeller, but it actually doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have a, uh, um, a, a length and pitch written on it for some reason. And he's got this rather unusual sort of uh, cylindrical nut holding it on. And, you have, and that white piece that has to go behind so it clears the um, uh, so so it clears the, uh, the, the, the the sort of artificial in the uh, engine. Okay, so we'll try and turn this guy off. Yep, he should be off now. Okay, we'll see where we are. Whether I can slide that battery tray out or not with that thing on it at the angle. Yes, I can see. This is how the battery tray slides out. But the problem is with the three cell, you can't slide it in properly, unfortunately. Um, it doesn't, it, it jams with the three cell. So the time, we got 40 seconds left. Started with seven, so we, that was six minutes and 20 seconds on this battery. And what's it showing? Uh, six minutes and 20 seconds on a 3,000. I would imagine we've probably got plenty left. 11.5, yeah, not that much. 3.83, no, that's... So, yeah, I'm a bit surprised that's as low as it is, really, because we weren't exactly pushing him massively. So yeah, seven minutes. I even with uh, seven minutes with a three thousand is probably all I'd want to leave the timer set to, because I could well, you know, use more if I were doing more stuff, and and we were down to a, you know a storage charge there after seven minutes. So I don't know what you get. You probably should only be setting the time to about five minutes then with a twenty two hundred. Um, yeah, seven minutes with a three thousand looks. I mean, you could get a little bit more. You know, you could you could get eight, but I, I don't like to push my batteries down to 3.5 or whatever. I like to, I prefer to only be pushing my batteries to about 3.8 or so. So I would uh, I would probably leave the timer set at seven minutes, with the expectation I'd usually I'd fly them on a 3,000. Well, I'm not entirely thrilled so far. Very nice looking plane, but a uh, bit of a struggle to get it trimmed in pitch and been behaving sensibly and as I say there were some some assembly problems but uh, we'll see I think I, I'm getting a little chilly now and also I've got to get back anyway so I think that's probably it for this morning we'll uh, we'll think and we'll have him out another obviously another day and see what we can do um, don't think I really want to start putting weight in the front really don't like to do that because you're just adding to the weight of the plane you know and causing problems but um you know i've definitely got him pushed down now i've got the uh, you know the he's, he's, his elevators are definitely um the resting position of his elevators is distinctly down in order to get him to not keep going up all the time ah well we shall see